Good day to you. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic day. It is a Thursday. Yep, let's do this. My name is Prosper <clears throat> Taruvinga, and I'm hoping um, I find you well. All right, so this video is being recorded live on Facebook, and if you're watching this part, you are watching a replay. All right, so I want you to hit the number two, and so that we'll know the people that we're working with, so that we can actually tailor this content. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment and let us know where you are actually tuning in from. I see, look, you're tuning in from Brisbane. Wait a minute, what's happening, my man? You've been traveling a lot lately. Tell me what's actually happening. This is a live session. I leave that part, um, especially for people to actually uh, connect with the video. All right. So I see Julian has just tuned in. Scott has just also tuned in. What's happening, my man? Gold Coast is the place to be. All right. So for those that are not well versed with what I actually do, I want you to know that I viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and enjoyable. And I want you to know that if you're able to want that profit and to actually enjoy that business, you should be able to create full and relate to your audience. So don't worry about that. I got your back. That's the reason why every single day we sit around here from 2 p.m. to 2.30 um, AEST for 30 minutes so that I can help you start, scale, and grow a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. I see Julian Van Diewel has just tuned in. What's happening, my man? Christy Dunbar. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody else is coming in. Chad Cooper, what's also happening? Thank you so much for tuning in. So what I do normally with the um, 30 minutes is I help you capture the right leads, um, deliver the right content to them so that you're able to engage your audience, educate them, uh, inspire them, and provide them with value. Guess what that does? It helps you convert them because we are turning all that advertising into profit, which makes you very profitable. And then pretty much all of that means you're going to be able to connect to your audience and provide them with your branding, create a community around your work and also um, sustainable relationships, which means your work is always going to be referred to those that they know, like and trust. I see Elizabeth Holgate has also tuned in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, your time. Today, we're going to be talking mainly about content, all right? How to actually engage that audience and how the game has changed in as much as people are no longer just coming to the internet to look for your stuff, but with the way, um, you know, Facebook's algorithm has been changing, with the way Google's algorithm has been changing, every time somebody puts their smartphone on the table, it listens to them. And the more it listens to them, it then tailors adverts to them. It then tailors um, content to them. I don't know if you are aware of that. All right. Have you ever noticed that if you start talking about cars or if you start talking about marketing or if you start talking about a, you know, general topic of sorts, you start getting those adverts, um, you know, in your newsfeed. Can you type in the number one if that has actually happened to you? And type in the number two if you've heard about it, but you've never actually seen, um, you know, it happening. And, and type in the number three if you absolutely have no idea what I'm talking about. All right. So while people are considering what I'm just talking about there, I want you to know that you can actually create for and relate to your audience. You know why? Because your audience now has a lot of choice. Your audience now has can pick and choose who they can listen to. They can pick and choose who they can get the information to. Now, just let me know in your own understanding there so that I can understand the type of people that I'm working with today. Um, what do you think people come to the internet for? Can you please type in the comments below? What do you think that people come to the internet for. I see Scott says, gotta go, food time for me, feel free to call my mobile later. Yes, we do, um, yes, have to still talk about a little, uh, a few things, so I'll, I'll get you, I'll get I'll catch you a little bit later. Christine, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a fantastic day right there. Now, tell me what you think people come to the internet for. Can you please type it in the comments there? What do you think people come to the internet for? All right. Because if you know that aspect, 
it will actually help you be do and have a profitable business. Now, James Mapinga says information. Exactly. Tanya Carlson says to find something. Great stuff. And Kristen says, we'll look forward to see you at Bloom. Absolutely. I will be there in full force and I will be bringing in a totally different way of facilitating an event. So you don't want to miss that, um, you know, show at Bloom. Kristen says to search for information. Absolutely. So there's three main things that people come to the internet for. Like you guys are saying information and people are coming to be entertained, which is basically to waste time. Like what you guys are talking about and also to be shopping. All right. So at the end of the day, all of that depends on who are they paying attention to and who is providing that information? Because if you're providing them with that information, either through video or through a blog, they get to know you. They get to trust you and then they get to like you. All right. So once they get to know, like and trust you, you would understand that people actually do business with those they know, like and trust. But you have to gain their attention. You have to gain, you know, they, 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 their need for your product. And how are you going to do that? You do that by engaging them with content. Now, can you tell me in the comments there, how many people have a strong content strategy within their business? Number one, if you have a content strategy, number two, if you're thinking about it, number three, if you haven't really done much in order to, um, you know, create for and relate to your audience because people need to be engaged. You need to educate them on what you provide them. The world is so depressing right now. You need to inspire them. So your content has to be inspirational. You also need to be positioning yourself every single time. Why do they need to get that information from you? Why do they need to get that information from you? You know, and then pretty much after that, you need to be providing value. So you might be sitting there and wondering, is this guy really worth my attention? I would want to let you know. For some other people, it's a complete no. All right. For some other people, it's a complete no. James says he's got a content strategy. Absolutely. I respect that, brother. And uh, Christine says, yes, writing a content strategy. Absolutely. So you are, you should have typed in the number two because people like we have already mentioned, they're coming to the internet to get information. And if you're providing that information, then they get to know you, they get to trust you, and then they get to like you. But they are exchanging that with their own time. Now, I want to tell you how important time is. Time is equated to money as much as you guys know. Time is actually what you can't give you. I mean, you can, you can, you can always earn money, but you can never get back time. So your audience is actually thinking, is this content worth my attention? Is this video worth my attention? Is this blog worth my attention? Am I going to get an ROI? And the ROI is, am I going to get a return of my involvement in that content? So all of those things you have to embed in your content. You know why? Because you're your audience no longer has time for mediocrity. Your audience no longer has time for things that are not directed to them or, or, or content that is not specific to their needs or to their place in society or to their, um, you know, to, to, to their real world view of how they actually see the world. So this is what we're going to be talking about, how you can actually, you know, sit back and actually connect and create for and relate to the audience that you're going to be demanding money off of. Because at the end of the day, I would not want to lie to you. People are bloated with information. They don't want more information. They need more facilitators. Since the last two years, last three years, people have just been consuming, 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 consuming information. Right now, they need somebody who makes sense of that information. So if you're just going to be bombarding them with information that is not relevant to them, guess what? They're just going to swipe right. That's exactly what's happening to our content right there in, 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 the, in, in, in the internet world right there. 
Or if they're not talking about it, if they're not, they, you know, discussing about it, their phones are not picking up on what to deliver to them. And if you are not participating in debates with them, really finding out what their problems are and trying to solve them with your content, then your content is just falling on deaf ears. Like, like, like that. Did you hear that? That was that was the sound of how your your, your content is is being thrown into the in, into the interwebs. Then now Stewie Murasapasi says early hours in South Africa getting to um getting you clear, my man. Spot on your audience and target market. Thank you so much, brother. Zulu say I'm hoping you're having a fantastic day right there. You know we're just really talking about how to really really target your content so that your audience would actually prefer you over your competition. Because like I was saying, time is such a precious, precious commodity. Think about it. Just think about it right now. You know, some of the world's, um, some of the world's biggest crimes. Can you think of what is a world's, what is a really big crime that people can commit that, um, you know, is a punishable offense by, by, by law? What is the biggest crime that somebody can commit which is punishable by law can you just please type it in something that um gets you maybe jail time or something like that can you can you can you just type something that is the biggest crime that you know people get punished for by the law and guess what those crimes the biggest biggest um you know punishment you can get is to serve time like what Tanya says, terrorism is a big, um, you know, offense that you would have probably, um, you know, killed a lot of people or whatever it is. And the biggest punishment you can get for that is doing time. Now, can you see how important time is? You know, it's often using, you know, you're, you're, you're often punished by being put inside and doing jail time. That goes to show you how valued time really is. Because you are not asked to pay a fine for that. You know what I mean? You're not asked to pay a fine for committing a crime like that. You actually have to go and do time. So you can see how people actually value their own time. Because it's, it, you know, you get punished by having that time taken away from you. So every time that you, 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 you get people um, looking at your content... They want to know what's in it for me. They want to know what's my return of being involved in this piece of content. So don't hold people hostage with content that is meaningless to them. You want to make sure that that content is targeted. That content is going to help them. That content is probably going to entertain them. So how are you doing that? What can you do to then spice up your content? What can you do to actually make sure that people don't feel like they're being held hostage while they are consuming your content? Because you know what they will do? They'll just quickly jump in and jump out. So as a small business person, do you absolutely know who your target audience is? Would you know that right now at a quarter past two, right now at a quarter past two, what is your ideal prospect doing right now? Can you please type it in the comments right now? If you know what your ideal prospect is doing right this moment, I'll tell you what my ideal prospect is doing. They're probably um, coming back from a lunch break. They're probably trying to close a deal with a customer they've been speaking to since 2 p.m. They're probably at a lunch trying to close a deal with a customer or they're probably at a golf course, right? You know, playing with their, 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 their own, um, you know, um, um, what do you call it? With, with their own prospects so that they can close a deal. All right. So if you know what your audience is doing, then you would know what sort of content to send out to them at what time that would actually make sense to them. You know why? Because you get them. Does that make sense? Because if you don't get your audience, you wouldn't know what to send to them at what time and what would be relevant to them. So generally, as a, as a business owner or even as a, as a, as a, as a marketer, we, we, we think alike. You know what I mean? We If you're audience is B2B, then you don't want to be posting out your content at a time where they're probably busy. You don't want to be pushing out your content at a time where they probably won't be able to see it 
And then it just gets lost and piled up on by more and more content that gets their attention. So you need to know who your target audience is. How do they actually value the time that they spend in consuming your content? Do they like longer videos? Do they like short videos? Do they like longer blogs or do they like bite-sized content that they can just get what they want from it and then actually go and implement immediately? What's in it for them? You know, because if you, you know, you blanket your content and then you think everyone is your customer, you lose them all. You can never go far trying to chase two rabbits um, at the same time. You know, so just because your target audience can affect every single person, it, it's not the same. I'll give you a specific example. If your target audience is a 36 year old female. There's two or three different types of female that I can give an example for. The first one is a career lady who's probably really wanting to step up in her career. So the information she wants is how can she be more um, you know, productive? How can she get more time with her boss? How can she you know, do more with the less time that she has? That same 36 year old woman can also refer to a mother of four. She needs information as to how can she make nutritious meals for her family? How can she relate to her neighbors? How can she relate to her husband? So you want to be specific as to this 36 year old woman. What does she want that my product or my service can actually fix? So that's where we're going with this. So instead of you going and using the old model of how demographies were chosen, use, put out content with, with, that has people of the same worldview as you. Do you see the world as the same way as your prospects do? Do you know what is actually frustrating them right now that they would be on the internet or they can't sleep in order for them to find the answers for? That's what your content should be all about. You know, so the more in depth you go with your targeting, the better your choices are for actually reaching the right people. You know, and guess what? For those that have kids, I want to give you a specific example. Kids grow. All right. I've got a three year old right now. And when, when, when I started sort of, you know, being serious about this business, that was three to four years ago, she was still a baby. I was walking around with my phone there and I was holding her like this, but Two days ago, I tried to, you know, lift her up. She's this big girl. She has her own mind. She's changed. She's morphed, but she's still my baby. So we don't realize that as adults, we are also growing. Our palette for content is changing every single day. So what used to work yesterday is not what is working for your audience today. So you gotta be in the trenches. So for you to actually know where the problem really is. You really got to know where your client is and, and, and what they are looking for. You need to know their needs before they ask. I'm not saying be Jesus, but you might as well be. If you really want people to engage with your content these days, the reason being people now have so much of a choice. Do you know how much of a choice people now have? Be on how they spend their time. Like I gave that example earlier on that, you know, you know, people, the worst punishment you can be given in the world is when somebody takes away your time. You know, the worst punishment you can be given is when somebody takes away your time. So nobody wants their time wasted. So make sure whatever you're putting out there, it gives them a return of involvement. So if you targeting, um, you know, um, the, your audience and making sure that you're interacting with them, you're creating for and relating to them. You know, you're not just speed, you know what, you know, spraying and praying and hoping that people will just get onto your content because every single time people need to be engaged. You know, they need to see your content at least six to eight times. What are you doing in the process to actually make sure that everybody understands, you know, what you've got to offer, how it will help them and how you are possibly going to engage with them? Because nobody wants their time to be wasted. No one wants their time wasted. And the fact that these days our customers have so much, 
so much choice. Okay, I'll give you a specific example. Do you guys watch any reality TV? Can you type in the comments what sort of reality TV examples are out there at the moment? Can you please just let me know so that I, I, I know that the people that I'm talking to are um, understanding what I'm talking about. What examples of reality TV shows um, have you seen in the last month or in the last year or so? Can you just type in one at least so that I, um, you know, I, um, it, it validates the point of what I'm trying to say right now. I see um, Married at First Sight. Yes, Tanya, thank you so much. So we also have that here in Australia, Married at First Sight, where people are brought together and um, what happens? People, people are brought together and then they experiments um, behind the scenes to see if they, they can match uh, being a couple in my kitchen rules. Um, guess what now we have, um, you know, the, the capacity to do. People now have the capacity to vote people onto the show or off the show. We now have a say in as much as how the show should end, how the show content should be provided. We have so much of a say. We can either tweet or we can write on their Facebook page or we can, um, you know, we can, we can write on the, um, you know, we, we can tell the directors how we want the show to be channeled. We can vote for who stays and who doesn't. And guess what your customers are actually doing? You, as a business person, you are a reality show. They can vote for your existence or for your non-existence um, in the same way that they can vote for um, you know, people uh, that are on reality shows. And if you don't believe me, put out crap content. If you don't believe me, put out mediocre content. You will be voted out, all right? Because at the end of the day, no matter where you look at, even if it's in search engine optimization, Google goes for those people whose content is being utilized or there's not a lot of bounce rates on your website. So as a business person, you are a reality TV show happening, whether you like it or not, or whether you like that example or not. And guess what? Your audience and your customers can vote for your existence or not. So now you got to make sure you're giving them the content that they want in order for you to stay afloat. Gone are the days where people just listen to somebody without, you know, them being heard. So that's why I'm saying people now need highly targeted content. You know, 70, it, it says, um, I wrote down the statistics, please indulge me. It says 79% of um, consumers are more likely uh, to engage, you know, with an offer that is personalized, that reflects their previous um, interactions with the brand. Have you seen how Amazon knows what you can buy next based on what you bought before? You know why? Because they're paying attention, you know, and they're being, you, people are being fed targeted content that makes their sales go, go high. So whether your content is in videos or email marketing, you really got to make sure that it is now personalized. It is very relevant to your audience, you know, because perfectly targeted content and delivered at the perfect time can actually help your business, um, grow. It leads to lead conversions. It leads to client retention because people now can just swipe right any moment they want. So targeted um, content will help you. Um, you know, it helps your audience to actually know that you know what their uh, needs are. Thank you so much, Tanya, for tuning in. I hope it's all relevant to you. I hope it is It is relevant content for you to actually, um, you know, s spark that fire within you to know that if you're going to be putting content out there, you have to know what your audience wants. You have to know what their needs are. And it also shows that you absolutely care, you know? Because then well-written content or well-done videos, um, you know, that are sweet and to the point, they actually show that you can actually help people, um, you know, with their needs and wants. It's no longer about, um, you know, what you want as a business person. It's no longer about you. It was never in the first place anyway. People now have so much of a choice. It's a matter of either swiping right or just Googling the next, um, you know, um, content piece after yours. You know? And if you are actually, if you can show somebody that you can actually help them by actually helping them, it increases the trust factor. These days, anyone with 
a phone, a laptop, a, a t-shirt and a, and a pair of sweatpants can call themselves an entrepreneur. So what reason do your audience have to actually trust who you are, trust the relevance of your content, trust how they can actually help, um, you know, you can actually help them um, with the stuff that, that they, 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 you, they're listening from you. And Tanya says it's relevant content for anyone in business. Thank you so much. You know, while it's easy to come up with mediocre stuff, people no longer indulge themselves in that anymore. You know, so you need to find out who exactly needs what I'm um, selling because old school buyer personas don't work anymore. I gave an example of that 36 year old woman. People are so different and diverse and now they have so much, um, you know, options, you know. So those basic demographies, they won't take you too far, too far these days because the buyer persona research really has to start with. Who needs what I'm selling? So if you're just doing it based on age, gender, income, location, you, you, maybe you're not really going far because people now have worldviews. Are they, um, you know, of a different dietary, um, you know, inclination? Are they of a different sexual orientation? What's their view on immunization? What's their political view? Are you actually talking to them? Are you, you know, involving them? And also just is your content relevant to them at that particular juncture of where they are in business? You know? So in-depth profiling will be the first step for you to actually highly target your content. And the best way to do that is for you to become your own customer. How can you buy your own stuff? What, what, you know, what goes under your, your fingers? Because if you really want people to align with what you're saying, you have to justify their fears. You have to encourage their dreams. You have to confirm their suspicions. You have to allay with their fears and you have to throw rocks at their enemies. So you need to find something that you can actually stand for. Because if you don't stand for anything, you can fall for whatever. You know? If you don't, you, you fall for whatever. You know? So I don't know if you've watched a lot of TV. You know, there's that, those detective TV shows. You know, remember how they actually work with uh, maybe, you know, profilers and, um, you know, uh, psychologists to actually get into the mind of a, of a killer or, or a murderer. So just like a marketer, you know, they start with the basics. Who do they talk to? What do they listen to? Where was the last place they, they were? Who were they talking to when they went there? So he comes up to their interests, their passions, their favorite places to hang out. What, what could have been the driver for them to actually do certain things? Why are they buying from you in the first place? Why would they pay you money in the first place if you don't know what they want? You know, I mean, you don't have to know it all, but it never hurts to actually know intricately what your audience is going to respond to. Then that means that you're not wasting your time just throwing out content that nobody's reading. I really hope this video um, helped you out. And if it did, find somebody that you can tag in this video that might need to really up their content game. Because yes, you might be putting out blogs, you might be writing out videos, etc., etc., but... As a business person, if you can't engage your audience, if people don't know of your existence, who is going to purchase from you? How are you going to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? You know? So spend time and really figure out, what am I providing? Who needs it? Where are those people? One other thing that you can utilize is if you're really stuck at finding out what your demography and audience is, find out what they're reading or what magazines they are likely to pick up at the magazine rep. And guess what? These guys have spent millions and millions of dollars trying to figure out who their target audience is. 
So once you know and start seeing the, 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 the language that's being used, you start seeing the caliber of other people that are advertising in magazines that your target audience is capable of purchasing or would find that as a laser thing to do. Guess what you can do? You can literally write to them and say, hey, I would like to advertise in your magazine. Can you please send me the demographics of the people that are your target audience or the people that read your magazine? Nine times out of ten, they will send you exactly their millions and millions of dollars worth of, um, you know, fact finding as to who their target audience is. Wouldn't that be nice? They've spent millions. You just wrote an email. But you need to know which magazines to write out to. You need to know what TV stations or TV shows to uh, send an email out to. Or, or bloggers are also, the, the, um, you know, another place where you can get, um, you know, already tried and tested demographics that you can actually now start writing and relating for, you know. So real estate people, find out. There's already magazines like this. You know, this is a property investor. I buy things like this because I'm interested in property. You know, see, I'm, I, I get the, the magazine to come. So if you really want to get to me, don't show me what you what your qualifications are. Show me that you can actually help me by actually helping me. At the end of the day, your content now becomes targeted. You're no longer just spraying and praying. You know, because a strong targeted content strategy is ideal for businesses who actually want to play the long term game. Unless you're just in it for the quick buck, then maybe this video is not relevant for you. But if you're looking to, um, you know, stay long in the game to actually have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, you need to step back and figure out who exactly is going to be buying my products. Why exactly are they going to be paying me? And then start putting out content that attracts, to, attracts them, that engages them that educates them about your capabilities, that inspires them to keep wanting more while you're providing value and you're positioning yourself as the person who can solve whatever problem they're going through right there. And the best part, um, you know, of creating, you know, a, a detailed buyer persona is that you won't just be using it for, for creating targeted content. You know, you can use that for your Facebook ads you no longer waste time, money, and effort trying to just, you know, attract tire kickers or any other marketing tricks like your PPC or your SEO or even when you're targeting your emails, all right? I would really want to help you, you know, start putting out content that your audience would be tripping, stumbling, and falling in order to get a piece of. If you really want to step ahead and actually start creating for and relating to your audience, just type in the word content below. We can have a chat, see exactly where you are, what it is that you're doing and how maybe I can be of help. I really want that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I really want to inspire you to do things that actually inspire you. All right. So if you found that this video has been relevant, share it with at least three friends in the next 60 seconds, because all you can do is all you can do. And while the momentum is still inside of you, just type in the words comment so that I can be able to get in touch with you so that we can figure out where your content structure is and what it is that you're actually doing right now. Because my mission is to actually help entrepreneurs like yourself to, to create lucrative and reliable businesses that are actually profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, tomorrow is the Ask and Prosper show. So be sure to come around. It's going to be an hour uh, segment where I will be answering any questions you might have or about the things that I spoke about throughout the whole week. In the meantime, like I said, share this or if not, comment the words uh, content so that we can, um, you know, help you um, reach your audience and actually start having a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for indulging me. This actually means a lot that I do have people that actually rely on these uh, content pieces. That's why I show up every single day for my audience. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now.